Spaghetti meatballs. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Manager Sim Beginner Series, even though we all know it's not really a beginner series anymore. Uh, this is episode 53, so we're going to be doing um, hopefully a lot more episodes as the end of year comes in. It's now November the 30th in real time, uh, which means we've still got a month of the current state of the game still here. So hopefully I'm going to do another, well... I'll try to get to 100 episodes, but it's highly unlikely. It's going to be probably up to 75, I'm guessing. But anyway, we'll go straight into this update number. Again, it's episode 53 of what's been going on in the Swedish League here in the Italian game world of Manager Sim. If you are new to these recordings, then welcome. Uh, Manager Sim is a free browser game. You just go into www.managersim.com and um, register an account. Uh, I've done a lot of guidance on how to do this in the very first episodes of this series. So if you go back to my YouTube channel, which is just here conveniently, then you go to playlists and then on the playlist, go to manager sim beginner series, which is right there. And um, you'll see all the episodes. Here's one that's just actually loaded automatically, which is episode 50. And if you go right down here, you will eventually find episode one. So that'll be the one episode you should um, look at if you want to know how to play the game. Um, and there's a couple of episodes here which um, gives you a brief description of the game as well. So that's worth watching. Back to the game. So let's do an update of what's been going on uh, since the last episode. We'll concentrate on the league first and then um, brief description how my Elfsborg side are getting on. Because remember that the, the series was originally my um, Elfsborg sides on mouse book side even sides I haven't got more than one side um, so how's the league looking well not much has changed really Kalmar under the tactical genius of manager sim called Fritz is winning the league no one's surprised that he's winning this uh, to be perfectly honest any side <coughs> he will manage they will do very well excuse me a second I'm losing my voice today So just drinking good cup of tea, very brave British here, cup of tea and doing the stream. What's what's so good on a Saturday morning? Yeah, so Fritz is the um, godlike genius, really, of uh, Manager Sim. Every time he goes to a club, he wins. And yeah, fair play to him, but the way of winning is quite easy. Just You just need those right players. And in Manager Sim, the way to find those right players <clears throat> is playing players here who are very high skill in almost all the areas. Like, look at this player here. I'm highlighting right in a moment, um, Mikula. He's got all his main stats are in the 90s or above 70. Um, so that's it. You just go around, find these right players. Look, here's another guy in the 90s and stuff like that. And when you find a player who's got all these high stats, you will do well no matter what formation you do. So it's pretty simple. The only problem is it will take time for you to find those right players. So um, it's up to you if you want to spend a lot of time finding them. If you do, you get success. And then obviously you need to find those players for your right formation. So Fritz at the moment is playing a, um, just hold on a second. Against, this is the last league game which shows his dominance. He's um, playing Burnham's on B side. And it was a very good game actually. And he's playing 4-2-4 four, four, uh, four, four formation and he won it 2-0. But I've just noticed he's just been knocked out of the um, cup. Because I think, yeah, he has. He's just been knocked out of the cup by Mike's Helsingborg. So well done, Mike. Um, Helsingborg always going to be a fawn in Fritz's side, I think. Uh, Mike also is a very good manager. And so, yeah, that's so well in um, Helsingborg. So there's the league table at the moment. Um, so Kalmar are currently winning after 11 league games. And Helsingborg then, it's uh, Burnham who's having a much better season this year. Um, currently third. Oribro, I should know these off by heart now. Morton is currently third, uh, fourth. Gothenburg under Mikhail is fifth. Helmstad under uh, Andre is sixth. K is still struggling at Malmo it seems. He's now seventh. Um, 
but again this is a very competitive league and then yes there's surprise my Elspor side are recovering from a really bad start okay we've only scored six league goals in 11 games which is pretty terrible but um, at least we're gaining some sort of form and we're pulling away from the bottom two uh, in fact our match form has been really good we have been unbeaten now in the last uh, five league games winning three of them but we will be facing a more tougher opposition soon I'm sure of it um, then we got Trelborg and um, sometimes the game is a bit slow it's 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 there you go. Dave and Trelborg are currently uh, ninth, and then VF and Andre is tenth. And then we got the four computer sides, including the champions of last season, which was Fritz's former side, AIK, who are now thirteenth. Um, AIK, you can see that Fritz took the uh, formations away from AIK because suddenly AIK are just not the side they were, and then Norcor Ping are the new Kalmar. They are rock bottom. I'm saying they're the new, new Kalmar because Kalmar of old were always rock bottom and way behind everyone else. But, of course, things have now changed. So we'll go into um, some different fixtures now. We're going to the cup because, um, sadly, my side got knocked out by Dave's trail ball by one of the cruelest ways you could be knocked out. We did very well, but we actually lost by scoring least away goals. We beat them 1-0, if you can remember. They beat us 2-1, and so Trailborg scored two away goals to our one away goal, and hence Trailborg went through. So, no real feelings. Uh, it was a very competitive game. Um, they had one sending off, we had one sending off, and um, they've had the better game. Simple as that. But the big thing was that Kalmar, of course, got knocked out. So that leaves VF against Gothenburg, Trailborg against Helsingborg. So this is going to be an interesting um, semi-finals. I can't actually remember who won the cup last year, so if anyone can remind me, please let me know. So we'll now go into the next update, which is the... Um, just checking my settings are still all right. Yeah. Which is now the um, internationals. How is everyone doing in, in the international cups? Well, Champions League has certainly progressed a lot more since the last update. We see VF... Um, that unless they really do badly in the last two league games, we'll qualify for next round. So congratulations to um, Andy. Yeah, I'm getting these names right. Um, the one I was worrying about is ARK because ARK are having a stinker of a season in in our Swedish league, and of course they're not managed by human anymore. But they've still got a remote chance of actually qualifying for the next round. Personally, I don't think they will. I think they could. Uh, finish third which means they'll go into the UEFA Cup but for an AI computer side they're doing actually remarkably better unless this group is really weak but I thought Leon were stronger than that probably not um, also here Helsingborg under Mike he was having a real tough group because he's facing his other side Milan uh, who are the best side in the game world by a long way he's also facing a very competitive Middlesbrough under Paul Skelton who is a legend in the Middlesbrough games he always plays Middlesbrough and he's always the manager of Middlesbrough I'm sure I'm guessing he's a massive Middlesbrough fan so that is a real tough group and also he's got another Italian side so um, he's got two more games to go and they're away to Middlesbrough and then home to Milan so it's not easy so but I think if he doesn't get to the next round then I think he should be in UEFA Cup where we're going next of course so UEFA Cup is where all the other um, Swedish sides are and when as um, if you don't know already my Swedish side Elsborg did not qualify for the UEFA Cup this year we didn't even qualify for the Toto Cup so we're not in Europe at all this year but that's kind of probably helped our form a bit because we um, our players are not so tired compared to other sides so we go back to round one and how did all the Swedish sides get on well the good news is all the Swedish sides qualified including K at Malmo. Malmo, if you remember, are the current UEFA Cup holders. And this was a repeat of the final of last season. Ironically, both of them were drawn against each other in the first round. I don't know if that would happen in real life. I think in real life you'd probably get seeded. So this probably would not have happened in real life, but it did happen here. And you can see it was a very tight game. Uh, Malmo beat Chevrio 2-0 
away in the first game. And then in the second game, Trevio beat Milan one, um, my man, Malmo 1 0. So it's very tight, but congratulations to Kay and Malmo. Trialbarg also got through against the Czech side Dukla, 5 5 1 on aggregate. Bernans Harmby went through, beating Vac very easly 13 0 on aggregate, including an 8 0 home dubbing. Pavrik there scoring, um, looks like six goals. Wow. He's scoring six goals. That's as many as my team have scored in the league <laughs> in one game. Uh, then Oribro beat Ulm 6 0 on aggregate. And Gothenburg beat, just beat Spartak Moscow. This was probably their tightest game of the lot. Beat them just 2 1 on aggregate. So we now go to round two and see who who each team is against. Trailborg have been drawn against Legia Warsaw of Poland. And let's have a quick look at that Warsaw side for you. Yeah, pretty decent, but it's a very, very small squad and they've got stamina problems. I'm not so In reality, really, um, they should be going after small signings this side because that's far too little. So the AI, I think, is not doing what they should be doing, getting good loanies in, buying decent players because I'm sure Legia Warsaw got a bit of cash on them so they should not be squad sizes this small to be honest with you they should be more bigger than that and also they've got stamina problems so the stamina problems are still here so we still got a little a lot of little bugs there Burnham I'm afraid um, but don't get me wrong it's still a great game Malmo are hopefully getting an easier round this time against RPS now they've got um, a human manager so that's going to make things um, interesting but the Finnish side are quite weak no offense to the Finnish manager so Malmo should win that quite easily Oribro you're against Scottish side Motherwell normally Scottish sides are quite tough and this one is pretty tough I'm afraid um, yeah looking at it they've got some really good players including this player here Matt Hoff he's got really good look at those secondary stats really good but he's got a broken leg ah he's got a broken leg for 11 11 weeks so that will help uh, they actually, they have got a bit of a striking um, crisis there. So, so only 22 players as well, and some stamina problems as well. So, yeah, I'll I'll see that um, Oribro should beat them on that. Gothenburg are against Stuttgart. Stuttgart German sides are also pretty tough, no matter what game world you're in. And phew, yeah, they've got some really good players here. But they've got stamina problems, which could help um, Gothenburg out here. But out of all those potential Swedish sides with all those rounds, I think Gothenburg probably got the hardest. Oh, I'm missing Harmaby. I'll do Harmaby in a minute. Um, Gothenburg probably got the hardest. Oh, Sioribro beating Motherwell and Malmo and Trouble beating their side. And then Harmaby, that you're against this uh, Icelandic side, Gridavik. Let's look at Gridavik's side there. Um, yeah, they got a mixture of good players. Again, a very small, well, not such a small side, but but you can see they only play certain teams, and they've also got some fitness problems. This fitness problems is still here, the stamina problems. Um, you should be playing players only over a 95 stamina. These are much lower. So, but I'll see, because it's Burnham, I see him winning that quite easily. And that's it. So, what's the next couple of fixtures coming up before we end the stream? Well, we've got uh, an all AI clash there with Norcorping and Garden. VF will play the Fallen Champions ARK, so they should win that. Helsingborg Hans, against Kalmar. This is going to be the match of the weekend. So it's um, second against first. Malmö against Orgrat. Hamstad against Orebro. That's going to be an interesting guy. Gothenburg beat Hamby. And then Trailborg against Elsborg. So will my Elsborg side get some revenge over Trailborg, who knocked us out of the cup? We'll wait and see. My Elsborg side are pretty settled now. Um, I'm trying to, as you can see, my player first team number is going down. I'm still getting rid of players and only playing really the good ones. Um, but I am mixing the sides up a bit. My, I've got no fitness problems, which is a relief. And yeah, I'm still selling some players though. I'm I'm learning other players. Kalstrom, who's the longest serving player now in my side he was here since day one if you ever go back to the first episode you see what my squad looked like originally he's actually having a really good season hence why I've left him in the side I'm as you can see I'm just taking off the loan list because I'm actually going to keep him um, and then we had some injury crisis as well Fra where are you 
they are. Fra. Fra has been t having, actually having a decent season as well. He's turning to sort of like a emergency backup striker at times. And um, yeah, we're only using one striker at the moment. So I'm, I'm relying heavily on my midfield to score goals. And we obviously we've got some really good midfielders there, like Kostin Lunu, the Greek international. He's only had one cap. And Booker, who's, who's Bookie, who's still our best player, who's now been around for. He's been around since uh, 2008, two years. So let's see, let's see how long Kalstrom's been with us. Actually, he's our longest-serving player. Yeah, he's been since 2005. So yeah, five years. All the changes I've made in the Elseworlds during the three seasons I've been here. There's, <laughs> I'm surprised he's lasted this long. Um, but yeah, we'll go back to the division table. So that's it from this episode 53. I hope you enjoy it. And stay tuned during the week. We'll do another episode during the midweek of what's been going on. And hopefully we'll give you, um, by then, the internationals, UEFA Cups and the Champions League will both be sorted. So we'll do an update on that. So this is Donut Donny signing off. Goodbye.